My name is Tupac Shakur, and I attend Tamapai High School. And I'm 17 years old. Since Tupac's passing in 1996, he has been immortalized as a rap icon because of how he lived and died. It's almost sacrilegious to say anything negative about him, but I think it's time the truth finally came out. In this video, I'm gonna break down his upbringing, his fraudulent behavior, and his female tendencies. Check it out. I'm gay now. Here, fuck me in the ass now. As a young kid, he did grow up poor with a difficult home life, but he wasn't part of the street life. He was really interested in acting. Pac was a full-blown theater kid. He liked attention, liked to be seen, and was always playing a persona. This would lead to his future persona of tough guy gangster. In 1992, when Tupac was 20 years old, he starred in the movie Juice as Bishop, a hardened gangster. This was the catalyst that turned Pac into a wannabe gangster. He was a very soft person. That's who he was. Two years later, he plays Bishop. But when you're a young kid, that impressionable, and you get all of his accolades for being that character, even gangsters, you know, look up to you and give you the, the that's a fantasy for a young kid like that. So let's start with the wannabe gangsters, black men. And you see how my style, I'm listening. You see it, you know, but you also see fatness. <laughs> Uh, now, I will admit, me, myself, when you listen to a lot of hip-hop, you do want to be gangster. You want to be a thug. And you know why I wanted to talk about Tupac? Because though we are very different, obviously, me and Tupac would have been the same. I have very much female tendencies like Tupac. Not gay. Okay, but I'm very much, as you can see, I may talk with my hands like this and that. Oh, darling. But that's just how my mannerisms are. They've always been this way. It's just the way I am. I'm not some hardened dude like, man, eh, fuck mine. I hear mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with you. No, I am what I am. Okay? I'm very forward, very giving. And my voice sounds very feminine when I speak. I've embraced that. Because I don't care. The problem is, when you're a young man, such as Tupac was, you get told you need to be a gangster because you can't be a square. You can't be a square. You can't be some... You don't want to be normal. You got to go out there and you know, be a thug. You got to want to shoot up shit. So I grew up on Bone Thugs and Harmony. I'm not against rap. I'm not against rappers. But I am against those thugs. It's the thuggish raggish. I was banging that every day in the car. Banging that when my mama used to come in my room and be like, turn that shit off. But I was like, mama, I'm a thug. I'm a gangster. I wanted to be so thuggish so much. That I remember being, I remember being out on the streets put myself around some drug dealers. I was scared for my life when I met a real dude. Because they were really living that life. They were really on the streets. They were out there really slinging drugs, really trying to be real. Thinking that was the only way out. And here I am, some kids from the suburbs, middle class family, talking about, yeah, I want to be one of y'all. Because you feel like, for me personally, for me, I always felt weak. I felt very sensitive. When I was growing up, I used to get picked on a lot because I was so sensitive. I was very emotional. And I just couldn't handle it. And I don't know why I was so emotional. It's not like I chose to be emotional. I just didn't grow up in a hardened life. So things got to me. I didn't want to be called this or that. Short. Ugly. Fat. Sensitive. You know. And I was sensitive before I even became fat. Still cried all the time. Still got mad. I never fought anybody. I didn't try to prove myself. I started, play, started playing football. I wanted to show I was one of the guys. When honestly, you know what I wanted to be doing? And what I wish I would have done back in the day? Instead of playing football and becoming this big old fat power lifter. I wish I would have learned to write. You know one of the reasons I've always had hot... Oh, I have horrible handwriting for you guys who don't know. One of the reasons I didn't have great handwriting because I was already seen as a feminine boy. 
right? I didn't give a fuck. I didn't want to work on my handwriting. I didn't want to work on that kind of stuff. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't draw. I didn't do anything that made me seem even more feminine. So I didn't care about having bad handwriting. I didn't even want to work on it. I was so focused on being strong. So strong. I remember I used to do, when I was, and this is not a lot. I'm not David Goggins. But I used to do 200 push-ups a night. I would get home, do the homework. Not very well. But I did homework. The 200 push-ups, and I went to bed. And I did that because I just wanted to be strong. Because I was so tired of the boys picking on me. And saying I'm weak. And I'm sh- I'm not I'm just not strong. I remember one time, and this is what, what really changed my life. Or at least my younger life. Somebody asked, would you rather be Trey or would you rather be my best friend at the time? And everybody said, I'd rather be my best friend. Because he was so much stronger than me. And nobody saw me as a man. They thought I was a joke. A clown. And they saw my best friend as a manly man. Because he was strong. And he, was, he used to hunt. And all this other stuff. And I was just this kid. Who was a little bit funny. Here and there. But. I got called gay all the way through high school. I, get called, I got called gay in college. I get called gay today. A lot of people think I'm gay. A lot of people think I'm gay when they hear me talk. Until they find out that I'm married to a woman. And even then they still question. It's honestly to the point where my parents thought I was gay. And I'm not crying, guys. (laughs) Sorry, I got the sniffles. But it was to the point where my parents thought that I was gay. They really did. Now, I don't know how, I don't know if they thought I was attracted to men. But they did think I was really feminine. My dad wouldn't let me hang out with women because he thought I was becoming too feminine. But honestly, I was attracted to every girl that I hung out with. You know? I was a, what do they call it? A lover's boy. Is that what they call it? Uh, Not a lover's boy. Uh, Yeah, today they call it a lover's boy. But back then they called it a hopeless romantic. Always wanting that fantasy, the beautiful singing to the girl, standing outside in the rain with the radio. All that bullshit. And so, I did everything to prove to my father that I was a man. By playing football, doing powerlifting. When I got to college, I did powerlifting. I tried to do everything to prove that I'm just a normal guy. I'm just I'm just as manly as the next dude. Now, in the black community, it's a little bit different. Like I said, you want to go the gangster around the black community. When I got around, when I went to a college where there was a lot more black people, I wanted to be gangster so much. And I really think that's what... We don't see from the true Tupac story. All we ever see is Tupac with the real gangster. He's really out there pop. No, he wasn't. Tupac was never a thug. It was all a lie. A fantasy. But they wanted to push this in our community. That being a thug and a gangster is the way you wanted to go. Tupac joined the Mob Piru street gang as a 23-year-old. That's a really cringe thing to do as a regular man let alone an already famous actor and musician. Most people hit on Chris Brown for being a Piru, saying that he's not real, but he joined at 18. So if you would have the opinion that Brown is a wannabe gangster, you would have to have the same opinion of Pac. And before anyone tries to claim that Tupac never claimed to be a blood or a gangster, number one, you need to shut the fuck up. Number two, Pac got a mob Piru tattoo, which the Pyrus didn't even want him to get. And RBX even spoke about Pac getting jumped in. Somebody need to tell Pac which some of the homies did, like, hey, homie, calm down with all that. Then he flipped and turned around and went and got jumped in the mob. Now everybody, now, now on the L.A. street rules is, that's gang sh-. He's in the gang now. You can't speak on nothing they doing. He was put on by a Piru named Trayvon Lane, and he clearly lived his life trying to be seen like that. Niggas try to play that gangster shit, but we M.O.B. for motherfucking real. Seeing Biggie throwing up this. Biggie don't know nothing about no gang signs. Why that nigga keep throwing up gang signs? Be careful, homie. Put more guns in East Coast niggas' hands than East Coast niggas did when they came out here. I put them niggas on the more weed gates and weed spots and safe havens and safe spots than the East Coast did. I put more rappers on than they did. I gave Biggie his first shows. I was the one that put, I was that bridge that niggas used to walk on to get over here. I explained it. I'm the one that told you. I'm why all these niggas run around with a gangbang on their payroll now. This would lead to his death, and even the way he died was cringe. What it said at the top for my people who are just listening to this, it doesn't matter. But what it said at the top was there is that parent, people had to check in with Tupac apparently. 
And then the other part said Tupac two years ago. Tupac was dancing. Come on, but the hell of a guy. You know? So, now you were listening to him saying he became part of the mob. Do y'all know of another rapper who did the exact same thing? Who we knew was not really a gangster like that. And when it, things came a calling, <laughs> it wasn't real. It got too real for him. And that's a man we all know as 6 ix 9 He did all that gangster, all that blood, all that stuff. Pretended to be something he wasn't. He just flat out wasn't. Just a regular dude. But what do you got to do? Now, the main difference between him and Tupac is that 6 9 had the media with him. So he could do a little bit more extravagant things and get away with it until it got real for him. Now, obviously, 6 9 is one of those successful stories. There's other stories of dudes who tried to be a gangster and got popped. And we're going to continue to listen to this Tupac story. But what you're going to see here, and I want to kind of kind of push this into the black man a little bit, but I want to push this to everybody. When you try to be something you really not and it gets real for you, It's a sad thing to see. I want y'all to know, there is a story of a guy. If y'all have ever seen Boys in the Hood. Now, Boys in the Hood shows that famous scene of the guy getting shot. Morris Chestnut getting shot with the... <gasps> Ricky! When Ricky got shot in the back. That person who shot Ricky in the back was just a regular old actor. But he, too, fell for the same foolishness. He wanted to be a real gangster. And so he started living his life out doing more gangster stuff. Ended up just getting himself killed. It's real stuff, people. And y'all just don't want to believe it. Y'all want to believe that Tupac was really this dude. Or did she? But he, he was never in that life. He made himself a gangster. He pretended to be a gangster. Now, can you be a, some square and become a gangster? Sure. But guys... It was five years ago when Tupac was doing all the was doing all the effeminate stuff before he died. Remember, as much as, much as y'all think that Tupac was out there, really out there for decades, Tupac was only famous for a few years before he died. His legacy, his death has been famous way longer than he was. But everybody wanted to be Pac because he could write. See the difference? See, you know why also, Pac, outside of the agenda to make the community make us want to be gangsters, I want y'all to think of something else. If Pac had been himself, Pac, if Pac had been himself, if Pac had been this man and wrote the same music, talking about, dear mama, I know you was a crack fiend, mama. If he'd have did that same stuff, y'all wouldn't have listened. Because it wouldn't have been thug. He wouldn't have been a gangster. You couldn't say I represent Pac. You couldn't do all that. No. You just be a regular, you just be a regular or effeminate boy that y'all wouldn't have cared about. Which is part of the reason why Juice World was so popular now. Why? Because now the agenda has changed. I'm gonna show y'all some stuff on him in here in a second. But now it's all changed from I born him to be a gangster. To now they want all our men to be. Like little ooze. They want him to be like Kais and Matt. They want him to be like, uh, what's his name? Trippy Red. They wanted it to be like Juice World. They wanted it to be like the Sad Boys. But they also wanted it to be like, like I said, Little Uzi, Kais and Matt. Not necessarily the manly man. They want it to be kind of the funny, goofy, square, I can get a girl. <laughs> Let me see if I can rizz her up. Yo, come out with Shouty. All that kind of stuff. Kind of the. It's kind of like the effeminate boy who got money. That's what they want us to be now. Very effeminate, but can still get the ladies, even though we know that's all bullshit. But back in the day, it was that was pushed away, and they wanted us to be gangsters. But they eventually got back to the original agenda. <laughs> oh, they eventually got back to the original agenda. Theater kid who didn't grow up gangster went and punched Orlando Baby Lane Anderson. A real Compton Crip hitter. Dude, Baby Lane was a gangster, bro. You gotta he understand, was. bro. Like he was. When you are, I said this earlier. When you are a real street dude, when you are really in the streets, you eat from the street, you certified in the street. 
a rapper can't do that. Like you, like I think Baby Lane would have respected it more if it was a, a it was a, a real street dude. By it being a rapper, bro, we don't like them dude. Like, ain't no rapper finna jump on no fucking gangster. He most likely did this to impress his gangster buddies, all the while they looked at him like a dumbass. If you watch footage of Tupac that night, you can see what I'm talking about. After the fight, Tupac is still in that mode. Hey, 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 hey. When Tyson get in the ring, he knock motherfuckers out. Well, that's what Tupac gonna do. He was still charged up. It's everybody that go to jail come out, they got good luck. That's very addictive. When niggas come against me, I'm gonna knock their punk ass out. If he didn't have anybody to fight, he'll find somebody to fight. He's acting like a kid. He was feeling himself as a pyro superstar and punched the wrong guy. If you watch the All Eyes on Me version of it, you can see just how cringy it is. 50, bro. 50, like, on his ass, real quick. Oh. Bitch ass niggas that jump me in the mall, left corner pocket right now. Pyro, you already know what time it is, nigga. Oh. Hold on, Pop. Hold up, blood. Hey, hold up. Look. Hey, wait up. Come on. Yo, hold up, though, man. He did things that he thought gangsters did, like being loud, aggressive, obnoxious. Hey, Shook! It's cold as fuck. Wait to get back there. Man, how the fuck Snoop gonna tell the world that them is his homies? <laughs> but calm down, I'm handling it, all right? Calm down? Nigga, whose side is you on? Now, who the fuck are you yelling at? I told you calm your little ass down, I'm gonna handle it. Nigga, you either handle it or I'm gonna fucking handle that shit. You watch who the fuck you talking come to. On, come on, come on, we all family. Well, I about that don't that shit, fucking nigga. tell me how to handle my business. This is not thorough behavior. The loudest in the room is usually the weakest. Now this next part really ties everything together. If you can't see the truth after this, then you're just a diehard fan that refuses to change their mind. Now we're gonna get into those female tendencies. But I love the part where it was talking about how Tupac was winning out there. He was still in that mode. I thought that was pretty... It like... When I listen to the story of Tupac, I think it could have been me. Not the being famous and being a rapper shit. Because obviously, he still was a lyricist. So he could still write. However, I feel like the Tupac story could have been mine. In a way that you, nobody would ever know. I would have just been some random guy who died. Because when it says that Tupac was still in that mode. Y'all remember Heath Ledger in The Joker. How he became so infatuated with his role that he did all these crazy things. The same thing with the guy who played in Snowfall. He did the same thing. He messed around with the devil if you go watch it, all that stuff. These people, when they become actors, and Tupac wasn't an actor. Being that gangster, he wasn't really that. But your mind, you can believe it so much. And make yourself that. To the point where Tupac decided to go punch a real gangster and it ended up costing him his life to the very end but it's, and that's a, a lot of the reason why I think Jada Pinkett was so infatuated with him not because he was a gangster she wanted to make him a nice boy but because he was a nice boy and became that gangster persona and she wanted to change it back to the nice boy she couldn't do it. Tupac was too caught up. He was really caught up in the story of being this gangster, being this thug. And he couldn't break free from it. Because one, here's the thing, guys. He was already famous. First of all, he had everybody backing him up until they didn't no longer want to back him up. But two, you guys, I can't explain it because I've never been through it. But I can only imagine. Take, take a ride with me. Imagine you were being your effeminate self, a theater kid, and somebody comes to you one day and says, hey, look, if you switch all that shit off, become a gangster, or want to be gangster, just play, just play the part. You ain't, no, you ain't really got to be out here in the streets. You, nobody's going to respect you like that. Don't go overboard. But if you could just pretend we can make you as famous, your name will live on forever. Are you going to say no? As a kid, Tupac was young when he died. Tupac wasn't 37. Tupac was like 24. He was 24 when he died. Oh, let me, let me fact check that. All right, quick, hold on. Twenty-five. He was twenty-five when he died. He was twenty-five. 
That means when he was doing all this other stuff, he was 20s, in his 20s, his lower 20s when this all came to him. So, of course, we see this all the time today. All these people are on kick doing all the dumb pranks. All the YouTubers we see, all the girls who want to do OnlyFans. These people aren't that, but they believe it so much they become that. Like today when I had to sign a release form, I felt so bad because I couldn't sign it myself. I had to go and get my mother's and all that. But um, Not only is he not hard, but he's actually soft. And I know a lot of you will try to dismiss it, but he definitely comes across as gay. So I missed a lot of things like that, but I know, no, actually I think it's, well, okay, my mother, from my mother's point, well, if you grew up happy, too happy, you know, like in fairy tale land, not fairy tale, I mean, not, I don't think so. Because I speak to my friends, I speak to them and they, they're baffled. They're like, yo, she told me this little joke that God gave you two ears to listen and one mouth to speak. He even says that he's a lot like his mother. I'm most like my mom because I'm arrogant. Totally arrogant. I agree. I have to say it. And we clash a lot because I'm arrogant, she's arrogant. And, and you should see us when we get in our little attitude moves. He's clearly effeminate. He could not be gay and just have grown up around only women. He does say he likes to chase girls so we can give him the benefit of the doubt. I mean, in some ways, we are. I mean, I chase girls and... But one thing's for sure. You don't go from this... They call girls the B word, you know, and they smack and beat and they'll get, they're getting girls. And I'm going, peace and... I think you're beautiful, and I'm and they're going to be, well, I like him because he's masculine. I'm masculine. I mean, I've seen guys speak to women with this much respect, and I deplore that. To this. Even the females know it's bitches. Females don't even hang with females. You know what I'm saying? So he was clearly pretending to be something that he's not, and he tells on himself in this interview. It's just I can't help it. I like popularity, and I like being around people, and... I just like, you know, talking and everything. My mother's more of a... That's the main basis of Tupac's character. He wants attention. He didn't go from this kid to a gangster in a couple of years because he was really like that. He turned gangster for the attention. This interview's 30 minutes long. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description if you wanna check it out. Even in interviews with his new persona, you can sometimes see little glimpses into his real side if you pay attention. If I'm representing like to what, what they think is that I represent lawlessness and the outlawment to what what they think is that I represent lawlessness. If you really pay attention, you can see that this is a theater kid playing a part. So, I mean, because something was going on. I have spirit. Spirit. I have so much spirit, man. Where I know I want to do that. This is what I would do, but I, I ain't going to do it. Now, to be honest with you, I've never spoke like this. I've never done this, darling, like I did earlier. I've never spoke like, oh my heavens. I've never been that feminine. No, I'm not a theater kid. I'm mean, just not acting. This is truly who, how I am most of the time. If you were to meet me in real life, I speak this way most of the time. But I'm trying to be serious. I normally talk like, you know, very, um, how would I <laughs> think of a serious moment? No, to be honest with you, I believe that you should date him again. Give him another chance. This, this is how I would talk. Not very <laughs> out there and going. But, I don't do this, I don't do this. Maybe some people, and like I said, I've been called gay for a long time. I don't know if people think that today, nobody came up to me today and say I'm gay. Now, when I try to talk on a mic or something, or people hear me on the phone, they think I'm gay. I've had to, even on like VR chat, people think I'm gay. Even when I was a kid, I remember they used to, uh, they used to do this test on it. They said, look at your nails. And I would always look at my nails like this. Like this. And people are like, oh, that's gay. Because you're supposed to look, if you're a man, you're supposed to look at your nails like this. But I would look at my nails like this. And it's like, that's so stupid. But you know what? I've embraced. Yeah. This is some part of me that's somewhat effeminate, I guess. I don't really care. I don't really think about it. You know. Um, I'll admit this. I can, eh, fully straight here. But I, 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 at some point, did think about being very feminine. Meaning, like, I mean, I guess the furthest I thought about ever going, well, I thought about painting my nails. Because I always thought, I personally now would not paint my nails. I don't, I don't like the look of it. Not the thing I would like to do. I still got an image to uphold. However, at one point in my life, I thought about painting my nails because I always thought they looked cool. Not the black nails. They look stupid to me. I'm talking about just regular old nail color. Maybe just to see it. 
Now, when I wear it out in public, of course not. I don't think it looks good in public. But it, I like the 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 art of painting nails. But I would never do it myself. Now, that's the furthest I've ever gone as far as being f- full blown feminine, in my opinion. Wouldn't do it today. Not the kind of guy I am. However, because I'm very men need to be masculine when they need to be masculine. However, I get it though. I know that the agenda has been pushed to us to now. See, now it's gone overboard. See, now we got out of the gangster stuff. Let's kind of move over a little bit. Now we pushed it into being really effeminate. And I don't agree with that either. I don't think that men should have to be overly like I, I've never dressed like a girl. I don't wear tight pants. No matter how effeminate I may come off, I have worn what you see now. Most of my life, I've normally been a, a hoodie guy. I do wear button-ups and ties, but I've never worn like tight pants. I never wear stuff that showed my stomach. I don't wear feminine clothing. I don't try to look feminine. I don't do feminine hair. I don't put on makeup. I don't do lipstick. I don't do nails. I've never been effeminate like that. Tupac was probably as close as I've ever gotten to being effeminate. That's crazy to say. I'm talking about Pac here. But I was like Pac. More of a that kind of feminine. But you would never catch me talking like, well, <laughs> me and my mom. <laughs> I, I would say my mom was arrogant. I, I didn't talk like that. I was more like what I am now. To most people, I sound gay. At least that's what people tell me. But I've never been... Uh, darling. I, the, the reason I come off so effeminate... To be honest, and I just like being around women, but I also liked them. I wanted to date them. I wanted to marry women. And I, didn't, I didn't want to be them. I just like being around women. I like the way women talk. I like the way they, they act. I just, I just find it amusing. And so the more women you hang out with, the more you start to talk like them. But I just found women always just found them so amusing. That's all it was. But outside of that, it was never, I want to be a girl. I was not like Pac. I may have came effeminate, but Pac was a little bit further along than me. All I'm trying to say is that what they've done to us now, I had to completely disagree with. I don't think we should be making more men effeminate because of toxic masculinity. I think taking care of your family and providing and all that kind of stuff is toxic. I think there's time men don't need to cry. I don't cry very often. Unless I'm talking about my son, I don't cry at all. Um, And it's just like, I don't think we have to be men who are just soft. I think there's a way to be an effeminate man if you want to be that, but not be soft. To the point where it's like you expect a woman to take your place or to the point where you feel like you need to be a woman. I'm never going to be for that. Here is that in 1991, Tupac made a sex tape. Now we don't actually have the footage, but we have some pictures. He's getting head while his friend Money B is right there. He even put his arm around him. In the next pic, there's another guy just watching him, and Pac is smiling at him. Hey, bro, come on now, dawg. Come on, man. But I know the old heads will excuse this behavior, so let me give y'all some more. In a photo shoot with David LaChapelle, Tupac got nude photos taken of him. Look at this nonsense. This one in particular. Come on, man. I don't know too many gangsters that would pose like this. He's showing off his ass. We gotta ask Boosie if this is gangster. But in all seriousness, Tupac was at the very least effeminate. And there's plenty of interviews of people who are around Tupac that say the same thing. You know, Tupac and I, we, we, we do goofy shit like uh, challenge each other with multiplication rock. The shit that was, that was on school, Schoolhouse Rock and shit like, he would be like just, just a different kind of dude, right? But then like we would be playing and all of a sudden he'd go back into, yeah, nigga, I'm a good, and I'm like, somebody black must have walked into the room. Yep, there it is. <laughs> yep. It yeah. was kind of like... Then we got Mob James, who was an actual Pyru who was with Death Row. You know what I'm saying? Just like Tupac. It, it wasn't my, that wasn't my job. But I'm not going to hang with you and fight people and do all that other dumb shit you doing because you think you this cat or you want to be from the hood. You ain't from the hood. And that's the only beef I had with Tupac. You ain't the homie. You not from Compton. You, you didn't, you ain't... Killed nobody in this motherfucker. You ain't gang bang on another hood. We also got Charleston White. Tupac played himself, homie. We saw him go from East Coast to West Coast. We saw him go from backup dancer to uh you think we you think y'all the mob, we the motherfucking mob. We watched him man, as smart as he was, homie. He was a follower. We was following a follower. 
who was called to lead that. So right. And, this, and I think that most gangsters didn't look at Tupac as a gangster. No. I think they looked at him as a great entertainer. Yeah. But not an actual gangster. Not at all. So I say that to say this, Tupac was not that guy. He was definitely smart, outspoken about political issues and passionate, but he wasn't gangster. He wasn't thug life. He was a sweet kid that wanted to be accepted, so he stuck to a persona in order to fit in. He was an actor, and to put it bluntly, a wannabe. You gotta remember this was before the internet, so you could go and change your whole persona and no one would know. Later, because of how big he got, his legendary beef, and his death, the legend of Tupac grew so big that people couldn't speak against it. It's been close to 30 years and people are now barely talking about the truth with a lot of pushback. The real moral of the story is that we need to encourage people to think for themselves. Now, we're not completely done here. Now, I want to talk about one man. Because he was different. He was the same kind of thing. He got kind of caught up. We don't really need to watch the video, but I can talk about it. Now, Juice World did the same kind of thing. The difference is, is Juice World never broke away from what he was. Juice World got caught up in the gangster stuff too, but that didn't get him killed. The drugs did. I believe, me personally, if Tupac had been born today, same background, same theater kid, Tupac would have been Juice World. <laughs> Crazy. Tupac would have been Juice World today. He would have been in that realm, meaning he would have been an emo rapper. I believe he would have been a sad boy rapper. I really truly believe that's what Tupac would have been. Because he wouldn't have been he wouldn't have been this fake gangster. So he wouldn't have talked about all this fake gangster shit. Tupac today. He wouldn't have been 6'9. Because remember, 6'9, he was still rapping about all that kind of stuff, but he wasn't. And I mean all due respect to 6'9, but he wasn't Juice World. I don't think he was a lyricist like Juice World was. Juice World was really just saying whatever came to his fucking head and he was good at it. You know, if you go listen to Juice World's studio sessions, he's a genius in the studio. The way he comes up with his songs is just wild. He'll rap a whole song, not even do that, scrap it, do a whole other song. I believe Tupac was that good. I do think Tupac was a great rapper because he was a great writer. However, I don't, I don't think we, I think we can talk about Tupac and take out the gangster. Now, what does this have to do <laughs> We're black men. I believe Juice World. No, I don't. I'm not saying we should all be like Juice because being like Juice <laughs> leads you to a lot of drug abuse. Okay, Juice World didn't deal with this problem because he was a young man when he got famous, so it came out a lot harder. He became a young man with money, and that normally ends terrible. What I believe we could learn from Tupac. And I believe what we need to help ourselves with is we listen to a lot of these gangsters, rappers. We saw what happened with Young Thug. He's free now. We saw, we see what's happening with Lil Durk. We see what happened with Polo G. We've seen what happened with Pooh Sicey. We see what happened with a ton of these rappers, the ones who are dead now. We saw what happened with, uh, I can't remember his name now. Was it Rich Homie? Well, we, all these dudes who are now gone because they, some of them had real beef, some of it was agenda. Okay, I know there's some things behind the scenes. I get there's the, you know, there's the forces that be, if you know what I'm talking about. That some of these rappers, they get killed for a specific agenda. So I'm not saying it's all because they were out in the streets. But some of them are. Society. And I'm not, you know what? I'm not going to say society. Let's call them who they are. The big dogs that be. Want a lot of us to be two, one or two things. They want us to either be drug pushing or gay. And I don't mean gay like just liking other guys. No, I mean they want us to be effeminate. But let's, let me not say gay then. Let's say most of them want us to be feminine or drug pushing gangsters. Both of those destroy our community. And those people keep pushing that kind of music on us. And they, they, they're smart this time. Instead of doing it the Tupac route where they take somebody who was already effeminate and making him a gangster, they'll take people who sometimes come off a gangster and make them effeminate. That's what they do with us now. Okay? And once, once you get put in that hole, you get that call, they're going to say, hey, we want you to do this. We want you to dress like this. We want you to get, I want to see you in stripper boots and pantyhose. Quick. So the agenda that gets pushed to our community now, and I'm not even going to say just the black community. I'm talking about people who listen to hip-hop in general. You're going to get two things now. 
You're either going to be a drug pushing thug wannabe or you're going to be very feminine and think that it's thug to do this all. And I think it's destroying us. I really do. This, but I think the one that's worse, in my opinion, is the wannabe gangsters. Because most, at least this is what I have seen, most men don't twin the, still go towards the effeminate. Some of them do. It's not working that well. But pushing that thug life, pushing that gangster life, and you, you don't have to push it into being in the streets. You just got to talk about blowing somebody. You just got to talk about shooting some people. That's all you really need to do, be a wannabe gangster. A wannabe gangster. Because what it does is it just gets in your head a little bit. And the older you get, you start hanging around certain dudes. And then you start taking a few more drugs than you normally did. And now you're drugging to not be just a, one of them shooting gangsters. You want to be one of those gangsters that's... Hey, man. Man, fuck it, man. Yeah, man. I was just out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I saw this fine ass bitch out there, you know what I'm saying? And like, and, uh, man, I be telling these niggas, bro, like, quit fucking with me, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't even that serious, but you know, me and you know, me went down there, you know, fuck a couple bitches, you know. We had a good time, you know what I'm saying? That kind of shit. That's how it is now. That's the kind of stuff they want to push. I ain't talk, Like I said, they want you to be more one of those people in the trap. Always in there doing drugs. Always out there smoking. Always out there just getting fucking completely blazed every day of your life. They make that shit seem cool. That's crazy to think. Back then, that wasn't pushed like that. But now they want us to just be drugless idiots. Okay? And that's why the sad boy genre and all that was working so well. They pushed the gangster stuff on us still. But what they did with Pac and all these other gangsters that were there back then, fake gangsters and 6 9 and all them, what they've done now. And I think, and I hate even saying this shit, but they're starting to perfect what they want to our community to be. Not this wannabe gangster necessarily. They don't care. They, they, they like the shooting and the killing. But for the ones who don't go for that, they want them to be pill poppers. Ruggies. That's why the sad boy music was so big. And don't believe that it's gone. It's going to come back in different forms and fashions. It'll be the guys who are kind of gangster, but they still rap about real shit. If you know what I'm talking about. The dudes, the dudes who would talk about killing you. But in another song, talk about the, how they take drugs just to make the pain go away. From all the people they kill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's really what's going on, man. We got to start opening our eyes to what they're really trying to do. Now, I wanted to split this up. When I want to talk about black women and what they've done and how they destroyed the black woman's side. But I want to talk about how they destroyed the black men. Now, how did this all come together? If you've watched both videos, here's where they both come together. What did us black men, <laughs> us black women do? You got them wanting us to be gangsters, say, fuck bitches, get money. And you want the other side to say, fuck niggas, get money. And so we hate each other. We come together for sex, make babies, leave. Or we come together, make, uh, conceive a baby, get rid of that baby, keep it moving. And it's just a show in our community right down the middle because we're not seen as bright. When Kamala Harris decided she wanted to, and I don't care about the political thing, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying the fact that when she wanted to represent us, okay, or even when anybody wants to represent black people, let's just say for anybody, Normally, when they want to represent us, they don't go to the businessmen of our community. They don't go to men who are well-respected, these well-defined uh, men. They don't go to that. They go to our rappers. They go to our hip-hop artists. They go to the Megans. They go to Wayne. They go to those guys. I'm not saying those aren't the greatest people, but damn, why do they have to represent us? They make music about bullshit. And those are supposed to be the people that represent us. You can't have any, there's no black businessman you couldn't have found. There's no black man who's doing something for the community you could have found. I'm not saying that rappers and uh, female rappers don't do that. But damn, I mean, can we have somebody else that's not rapping about fucking? Can we have somebody else 
who seems like we're not listening to children? Can we have somebody well respected? Because I feel like when every other community goes to their men, their men are in ties, button up, businessmen, have been running corporate for 30 years. Somebody that's like looked at differently. But when it's us, we get rappers, we get ass shaking, we get booty shaking, we get little John, we don't get nothing. All we get is rappers and basketball players. We don't get nobody else. Somebody we can't relate to at fucking all. I can't relate to a rapper. I'm not a rapper. I can't relate to a basketball player. Motherfucker, I don't play in the NBA. I can't relate to people who are making millions. I can't relate to people who are making millions and they're not in the business world at all. I can relate to somebody who's making a ton of money and they work in the normal nine to five, even if they are businessmen or whatever, at least at some point it was some relatable. But we're talking about people who are physically gifted that I'm not in or somebody who raps about sucking dick. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to be presented by that. I can't relate to that. I didn't get paid millions to talk about being a throat goat. I didn't get paid millions to talk about killing my own people. I don't make millions doing that. I can't even closely relate. I don't get paid pennies to do that. I do get paid to work and I can relate to somebody who works. Period. (laughs) <laughs> what am I thinking about? So Illuminati. I don't even know what. I, I never watched them, actually. All I know is he said that's tough. That's tough. But I, I don't know any of his other things. But for real. I mean, what are we doing? The first black women and black men to come together. Honestly, we just got to admit that there's been some brainwashing going on. They don't want us to see us together and then come together. That's really what it's come down to. I think black men are starting to get that a little bit quicker than black women are starting to get it. But I think black women will eventually see, hey, we were meant to be together. Black women are going to have to start to realize men, us black men are worth it. Just because you got your little education. I'm a PhD. Just because you got that doesn't make you better than us. And I, and I really want to talk to the black men about getting with black women, but I think black men are doing that already. We are trying to make black women. They just don't want us. Let me tell you all a quick story. Some people may ask me, Trey, why don't you have black black women? Why don't you have black this, black that? Your mama's black. Motherfucker, I tried. Let's get something clear. I was ready to marry a black woman and die with a black woman. The only reason that didn't happen for me is because I was looked down upon because my girl at the time had an education and a bachelor's degree, and I didn't. Let's just call it what it is. My, when I was dating a black woman, this close to marrying her, she refused to marry me because I didn't have a college degree. That was the only thing. I had to be educated to marry her. That's what's wrong with our fucking women sometimes. You women, women, please hear me out. I know I'm just a fat man. Like I get it. You, it ain't about dating me, mother. It ain't about dating me. It's about dating somebody. I don't want you to end up with a dog and die alone. I want you to be with your husband laughing. I want you to be laughing at his jokes. Every time he's like, babe, let me tell you this one thing. Have you ever heard of this? And then you're just laughing all day long. Everything he says. When you see him. It's beautiful. You're watching him mow the lawn. He's just so happy and giggly. I want that for you. I don't care about you. I don't want you. But damn it, you're dying alone. So this whole getting education thing or thinking that your black man has to do this and he has to own the fucking world. See, that's one thing that's so frustrating. Is when a black woman gets talks about a black man, he can't just be a well-working man. <laughs> Guys, and I'm talking from experience. I've, I've obviously black, been around black people. And I've been around a lot of white people. I grew up in a white town. I went to a predominantly white college. And then I went to a, a I wouldn't say predominantly black college, but it was, the percentages were way higher. Right? I went to all the parties with the blacks. And the reason I say blacks is because black people are just black people. I don't, I don't know why we have to be this black and that black. But I went to all types of parties with black people, hung out with black people. My friends were black people. But one thing I noticed more than anything is that when a black man married the black woman, 
at least today, this black man can't just be hard working. So many white women will wear, marry a white guy who is a mechanic. They'll marry a white dude who works on a farm. They'll marry a white dude who's a construction worker. They'll marry a white dude who works the warehouse, works at UPS, works at the post office. Fucking. But a black man, he can't just work at the post office. He can't be the postmaster. He can't work there at all because they're not respected. He's got to not be only just a black man. He's got to be a black businessman. But it can't be just your own black businessman. He's got to be a black businessman that gets money every day. gets flowing like it's not serious. And he can't just be a black man that makes six figures. No, he's got to be a black man that makes about two, three hundred thousand figures where they can buy whatever car they want, go wherever they want, go on vacation. He can't be a black man that works and doesn't see his family. No, he's got to be a black man who somehow makes three to four hundred thousand dollars a year, huh, but is also there for the kids' football games, uh, but also there to rub your feet and also bow down to you, but also somebody you can follow. Like, what the fuck is he supposed to do with that? How can he also... Y'all want him to be a man who rubs your feet, but be a masculine man. But it also has to be a man you follow. But you're allowed to talk bad to him. You're allowed to back... You're allowed to back talk. You're allowed to be a bitch. Pretty much. Let's just call it what it is. Y'all want to be a bitch to a man who's making two, three hundred thousand dollars and just be whatever the fuck you want to be. You want to be... Your, you want to be out. You want to be able to either be. You want to be a loud mouth. You want to be the smartest woman in the room. You want him to be rich, but you be smarter than him. You want him to be rich, but he takes care of you. He's always home. You want him to be rich, but he can't be a rich oil worker. He can't be in the oil field making that money or a truck driver. No, he's got to be a certain kind of rich. You got to be a white collar rich. He's got to be somebody respected in the community. Somebody you can brag to your girls about. Oh, by the way, he can't just, and I forgot all this, he can't just be your regular dude, have all of that. He's also got to be good in the bed. He's got to make it. Splash. Every time he sees you, from the second you meet him, hi, what's your name? I don't know what girl that is. Hi, what's your name? Oh, my name is Brian, and I'm the executive of Executive Club, and I'm also, I got a big pipe, and... That's what it is. That's all they want to be as moist as possible. He can make it splash 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 all over. The place. And that's just what it is. Right? Well, guess what? That ain't ever gonna happen, baby girl. But it can happen in your dreams. It can absolutely happen in your dreams. But a lot of you women, let's just be honest. And I would, yeah, listen, I'm a fat, short man. Like, I'm not going with Beyonce. I'm not. You don't know where you play. And some of you women, you think you're, 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 you're just because just you exist and you got something in between your legs, you can just get any man. But Kevin Samuel said it better. You know what you really are? We ain't fine enough for no money. You know how fine you are? You get second shift at the plant. That's it. You're not fine enough for them. You don't get those men. You get... You get second shift at the plant. Second shift at the plant. You get the dude who works overnight. That's what you get. That's all. And you know what's crazy about that shit? Is you could be happy laughing with that man every night. <laughs> every fucking night. Even if you gotta work. You can... Oh my god. You don't know how many people I know that are elderly now. Who had families with a man who wasn't fucking God. And they lived great. They had great memories. They had a good ass time. Had wonderful kids. Had to experience so many memories. But because y'all can't find a man who can't make it. You just can't get more so y'all can't fuck just right. Now your ass is lonely. And the only thing they gonna ever talk about you is about how you had a dog named Sparky. And then they burying you now. So, I think the only way for it to work, black women, it's on y'all. The ball's in y'all's court. Do whatever the fuck you want with it. <laughs> At this point, I don't care. I don't really care. I want to see the black community thrive. But if black women aren't willing to do anything, hey, we'll keep talking about it. If something happens, cool. If something don't happen, cool. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't really, you know. At the end of the day, I care. But at the end of the day, it's like, man, I'm not going to die for this. 
I'm not going to tell a black man to wait for this. I'm not waiting for him to tell him to wait for some black woman who's going to treat him like shit. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. If you can't treat him right, somebody else will treat him right. And then we're going to keep it simple. Real simple. Type of shit your grandma understand what an old ass. That's it. Anyway. How long we been going? Two hours and four minutes. So, with that being said, goodbye.